Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Three Girls, One Monthly Catch-Up. Um, this is going to be our monthly catch-up for the month of July. Uh, and for any of you who, by any possible chance, have not joined us for one of these before, um, this is something that we do every month together. We just sort of like to talk about what we've been up to for the past month, what decks we've been using and enjoying, books we've been reading, TV and movies we've been watching, general fun life stuff that's been going on. And it's something that we like to do all three of us together because it uh, is more fun that way. And it keeps us accountable for actually doing it every month because we actually make an appointment and meet up and do it. <laughs> so it <laughs> keeps us on track. So um, anyway, so we're just going to go ahead and get started with our normal categories. Um, I think I'm going to be going first this time. So typically we lead off by talking a little bit about what decks we used over the course of the month. For the month of July, I had grand plans to spend the whole month with a couple of decks that I actually did a video about recently. Um, I did a, a, a video talking about decks that are basically like a Rider Waite Smith system deck, but illustrated in more of a Marseille style. Um, and so one of the decks that I spent some time with was this deck, which is the Rider Marseille, which is a deck that was given to me for review um, by the creator. And it's a very cool deck, you know, and you can see that it is a, a Rider Waite Smith style deck with Marseille elements uh, to the illustration and definitely like a sort of Marseille visual style um, to the illustrations. So I spent about a week with that deck. And then I spent about a week with uh, this other deck, which is called Letero de Marseille Wait. This is a French deck that I already owned. And this is similarly a, a Rider Waite Smith deck with Marseille elements and Marseille style to some of the illustrations. Um, and, you know, the thing about these is that they're really cool decks, like from a from an aesthetic standpoint, I think they're cool. I like this whole concept of a Rider Waite Smith style deck that has more of a Marseille flavor to the illustrations. Um, but again, because they're really just like clones for the most part, I kind of got bored with them really fast. I feel like these are better like decks for clients than they are necessarily like decks for me to just like have a really fun time with reading on my own. So I really only spent, ended up spending like a week with each of those decks um, because then a deck arrived that I was super excited to work with, which is this deck, the Good Fortune Tarot. I don't know if you guys have, have seen, this is a, a new one that just came out. This is a deck, the illustrator is Jessica Rue, who is the same illustrator who did the um, Woodland Wardens. And mm -hmm. I love her illustration style, but I knew that the Woodland Wardens was like not going to be an Oracle that was going to be one that I probably would end up using a lot necessarily. But when I heard that she was going to be coming out with a tarot deck, I was super excited. And then I saw um, Lisa uh, Pepez do a walkthrough of this deck and just fell completely in love with it. So I ordered it. And so I've been using this one now for a couple of weeks and I'm going to keep using it in August because I really, really like this deck. Like it is really cool. The illustration style is beautiful. Um, it's got a lot of just like fun, interesting takes on the cards. The guidebook is by Barbara Moore. It's really well done. Um, it's on linen finish Llewellyn cardstock, which is like fantastic. Um, like everything about it, the backs are pretty. I mean, like everything about this deck, I, I just have really, I don't know. I, I've gotten really excited about it and I've really enjoyed working with it. Um, you can just see how pretty this deck is. Like it's just, the illustration style is fantastic. So um, so I've been using this one for a couple of weeks and I'm just going to keep on using it because I've just been doing it thoroughly this entire time. It's just a very, very cool, cool, beautiful deck. And then I paired an Oracle with it, which is the Seashell Oracle, which I think we've talked about um, recently because I think, Julie, you got this one too, right? Yep. And this is a really beautiful Oracle also. Um, and it's 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 basically just like a mix of seashells um people associated with the ocean creatures associated with the ocean concepts associated with the ocean so um it has good keywords and um there's a nice assortment of keywords uh for each of the cards so there it's it's just it's a beautiful deck i really like the art style i like the keywords a lot it's been a fun um a fun 
Oracle to work with. Like it just, it just has worked really well. It's had some nice messages for me. Um, it looks pretty next to the Good Fortune Tarot, um, even though, you know, thematically they don't necessarily have a ton of overlap, but they look nice together. So, um, so it's been a really good pairing for me. So I'm going to stick with at least through the first half of August, this Oracle and the Good Fortune Tarot, because I'm having a really good time with that combo. So just for context uh, for this deck that I um, used pretty much all of like July. So, and this is like spoiler to like our wild card category, but Matt and I went to the beach and it was in, in part to um, scatter my sister's ashes. Mm -hmm. And so um, I wanted to uh, take a deck with me um, to that had a, like a ocean theme to it or like an aquatic theme to it um, because, you know, my sister's, uh, you know, favorite place in the world was like the ocean or just being by water. And so I wanted a deck that was watery. And I think I mentioned our last catch up. I don't have any apparently. And I was like, well, shit, now what do I do? Uh, because I did have a couple decks in mind to purchase one being the seashell oracle, but I knew it wasn't going to get to me in time for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as I do, like if I don't have something, I make it. Um, mm -hmm. But actually what I ended up making wasn't ocean themed or like aquatic. Uh, an idea came to me that I felt like my sister would really get a kick out of and would really appreciate. So um, in memory of her, I actually like handmade uh, a Twilight themed majors only deck <laughs> because she was obsessed with Twilight. And both this is something that both of us really bonded over when we were younger. We read all the books. When the movies came out in theater, we were there. Yeah. She was just really, we had such a, a fun time and fun memories surrounding Twilight. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hand make a, a little majors only deck with with materials that I have so I don't, I'm not going through MPC or anything mm -hmm. so yeah I just like did screen grabs and um printed them out and you know so it looks very handmade yeah um you know put them on you know blank uh playing card stock that I already had and you know laminated with contact paper uh, this is the Colin Crest by the way for those of you who don't know but <laughs> and just so that and, would be me I don't yeah. know I don't know who <laughs> half the people in these pictures are yeah <laughs> So just just the majors, and uh, I just ended up really having a great time with it. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, not only did did I uh, make this kind of in her memory, but it was also it also provided me a lot of levity for an occasion that it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so what I did was I brought this with me, and I actually used it uh, along with. Uh, this deck, which is the Moon Void second edition, which is out of print, mm -hmm. and that I also modified. But mm -hmm. like together, they you know they worked. They I felt like they they worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. And actually, like um, I found that this deck, funny enough, like when I got back from the trip, um, it I paired it with. I didn't want to stop working with it just because it was like so much fun. And then so I ended up like pairing it with. Um, the the sassy burrito, mm -hmm. sassy burrito, mm -hmm. which worked seemed to work really well as you know, also, and then and then let's see here, and then also the finestra, mm -hmm. you know, because these are they kind of look like vampires to me. They just like <laughs> listen pale and all that good stuff. So that was fun, and then um, and then also I like I I whipped out my my pogs and did it. <laughs> Julie turned her handmade Twilight deck into a total workhorse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, I was just, I was just had the time of my life with, with this like handmade, you know, very, very handmade <laughs> majors only deck. And it works. I mean, it's, it's a, like it has stayed you know, intact, like I can hand shuffle it just fine or overhand it just fine just because of the size of it. So um, yeah, and I just, I yeah, just used the materials I already had. And so that was a, a cost saver. But uh, eventually I did end up so after I came back from the trip, I did end up uh, 
getting the seashell oracle, which I had had in mind for the trip. And I, I guess I really don't have to show this because you already showed it. But like it, I threw this into the mix and mm -hmm. it worked again, it worked just really well mm -hmm. with, with uh, the, yeah, the Twilight deck. I mean, it's, I feel like the, I don't know if it's like the colorway of this deck and just like it's the, the collage style of it. It's like, so it just works with so many decks I've mm -hmm. noticed because mm -hmm. I worked with it like a good chunk of July and I've, continued working with it into the month of August. So yes, that's what I worked with in July. Heather. Well, I didn't have a very good month tarot wise. So mm -hmm. I had a bit of a like weird tarot slump thing mm -hmm. going on. So I thought, well, I'll just let, I'll just let some random Google number generator pick my tarot deck for me to start with. And it picked the uh, Deviant Moon tarot. Oh, which everybody's seen a million times I'm sure but um and I used it for about a week and a half and I was mm -hmm. like this is this is not the right deck <laughs> for the mood that I am in right now like this is not giving me what I need this is <laughs> not at this moment not the right <laughs> deck for the moment yeah <laughs> I love this deck in the right circumstances but right now I think I am just making myself worse <laughs> So I used it, yeah, I used it for about a week and a half and I was like, no, no, something is going to have to change. Mm -hmm. And then I got really stuck because I just didn't want to pick up anything. Like I really got to a point where I was like, I don't want to pick up anything. And then I thought, what do I do when I'm in a slump or in that kind of mood in general? Like what kind of thing do I love? And which led me to picking up the Buffy Tarot, mm. which is in the connection in my head, which I probably don't have to explain out loud, but that's what I do when I'm in a slump. I watch Buffy. <laughs> so, so I got out the Buffy tarot and I used that for the rest of the month. And it's um, it was fine. It was fine. I didn't, I did daily draws and then towards, I took a massive break, like the last week of July. I don't think I touched tarot at all. I don't think I was even doing daily draws or anything, but I did do some readings with it and took some pictures and put it in my, I say journal, but it is actually a journal on my iPad. Mm. And still just, fun. I mean, it still counts, right? It still counts. Yeah, but absolutely. It's still a journal. Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, I don't know. I just, July, I was in a, and I had a good July. Like, don't get me wrong. I had, in every other way, I had a really good July. I just, for some reason, Tara was just not doing it. I was just <laughs> like, I am not in the right headspace for this. Maybe I just was like avoidance. Maybe it's avoidance. Maybe in July I was like, I don't want to deal with head stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I kind of ended up just putting it down. But when I was using it, I was having a good time. This deck has its issues. We talked at length together about mm -hmm. the issues with this deck, but I still really like it. Yeah. I, I'd, still, I'd still rather, I'd rather have this than nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, it was good. It was fine. Yeah. Are you thinking of maybe getting either the mini or the mega of Buffy Tarot? No. 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 Probably not. It's it's very. In fact, I the only time I have ever bought the same deck twice is when we made a deck. <laughs> we printed it on two different card stocks from two different companies. And that's the only time in my life I've ever purchased the same deck twice. Mm -hmm. so. Oh. so no, I probably won't. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to know if the mini or the mega are actually coming with a corrected guidebook. Wow. Yes, that's I will be. Well, yes. Because that guidebook's an absolute shit show. Oh. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get it regardless, but I, I, I'm just very curious to know what they did about that um, when wow. they decided to issue it in different formats, if they wow. have actually fixed the guidebook. I would, I would, hope, I would hope so. I would hope so. My God. Because they're just looking to get their asses figuratively yeah. kicked if yeah. they want to print a mega and a mini without fixing with the, it. With the mistakes, yeah. With the I mean, it's pretty shocking that they let it go out with the guidebook that they did yeah. in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, so that was pretty much me, Tara Wise. Not too much to say this time. Well, I think what we usually talk about next is books. So um, I will go ahead and start again. Um, so as far as 
July goes, I read a couple of different things. So one of the things that I read, and I, Heather was participating in this with uh, me as well, um, Laura from Aquamarine 18 got a group of folks together to read Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Um, and so we had a Discord group and everything to talk about that book. Um, and then I ended up being... Um, kind of traumatized enough by the book that I like said almost nothing in the discord group and like didn't participate at all. Um, I, I finished the book. Um, it's, it's a really, really good book, but it's one of those, um, like dystopia portrayals of a dystopia. That's almost too plausible to the point that it's like very upsetting. <laughs> so, um, so I, I, I read it, I finished it. It was really, really, really good. Um, but I had a very, um, I don't know. I had a very strong reaction to it while I was reading it. I really, I'm, I, I am definitely going to read uh, the sequel. It was, I, I guess I understand from Laura, it was originally a planned trilogy, but Octavia Butler only completed the first two books in the trilogy. Um, and I definitely plan to read the second book, um, but uh, I'm going to have to wait until after the election, uh, just because I, I, there's just too much trauma associated <laughs> with, with, various um aspects of that book and i understand that there is a political a political figure in the second book in particular that is very uh reminiscent of some of the shit that's going on in american politics right now and i just um would struggle with that a lot so i decided to take a break from the parable uh books and read some other stuff instead um so, but again, incredible book. Excellent. I highly recommend it. Like it's a, it's a, it's a depiction of a, of a dystopia that it's the kind of thing that makes you feel like it could happen in like maybe 20, 30 years. You know, if things really, really go south for humanity from a climate standpoint, from a political standpoint, from a, um, just, you know, overall like health of society standpoint, it's such a, a plausible depiction of the breakdown of society that could happen as a result of all of that, that it's just, it's a very, very impactful read. And the fact that Octavia Butler wrote it back in the nineties is like mind blowing to me because it's like, she predicted so much of what we would be struggling with um, like today and in the near future. And so um, it really, really incredible book. Uh, but, but yeah, it was, it was a tough read for me. Um, so the only other I randomly read, um, cause I was like, this is sort of a totally different kind of book to read next, but I was kind of feeling like I still wanted to stick with some of the, you know, sort of classic sci-fi and fantasy. And I ended up reading, which I'd never read before. Um, something wicked this way comes by Ray Bradbury. I don't know if either of you guys have ever read that book. Oh, um, yeah it's and it's just it's a book it takes place like in a small town um in i think i want to say like the 20s or 30s like it's it's sort of a fictionalized you know ray bradbury wrote this trilogy that's sort of like a fictionalized version of his own boyhood from what i understand but in this particular book there's this sort of evil carnival that comes to town and um and you know it's basically the way that all of the townspeople sort of get sucked into the the nefarious plot of this like evil carnival and all of the different people associated with it and how the people running the carnival sort of prey on the fears and hopes and desires of the sort of hidden um, fears and hopes and desires of the different people in the town. And, and the two main characters are two young boys who sort of figure out what's going on and have to try to, you know, battle against this whole thing anyway. Um, and it, it, it was a very, a very good, enjoyable book. I liked it a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's a classic for a reason and it was, it was good. So that was kind of the other main book that I read, um, you know, definitely a very different, you know, Rather than a future dystopia, it's more of a nostalgic horror fantasy, I guess. You know, just just a different kind of style of book, which felt like a nice uh, a nice diversion after I had read Parable of the Sower. Uh, July was a, a a DNF month for me, so mm -hmm. what I will share is the one the one book that I managed to finish, <laughs> which uh, is Legends and Lattes oh. by uh, Travis Baldry. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have read this yet. I have it, but I haven't got around to reading it yet. Okay. It is classified as a, a cozy fantasy read. So mm -hmm. um, just very kind of low stakes, um, nothing too stressful. So if either of you are coming down from a stressful book and you want something, you know, just nice and cozy and just 
th this this would be that book because mm -hmm. it's so it's about um, this orc named Viv right here, and she has seen you know battles and you know bloodshed and bounties and you know she's done with it she just wants to open a coffee shop <laughs> first ever coffee shop in this like new city um mm -hmm. new to her city and so this is all about following her on this journey and mm -hmm. the obstacles that you know she uh runs into and the different uh friends that she she makes in the process so it's one of those things where like, you know, it's not that long of a book. And so I thought I would actually fly through it. But because it is one of those like low stakes, cozy reads, mm -hmm. I found myself not really rushing through it. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that I wasn't enjoying it or wasn't looking forward to reading it. I just, you know, it, it just kind of like I got to it when I got to it. And mm -hmm. um, so it took me a little longer, but I, I did, in fact, really, uh, really enjoy it. So are you going to read the other one, Julie, the prequel? I, I think I, I think I will. Yeah, I think so. Um, because, yeah, I, I liked this and I, I mean, it's, it's different for me. I usually, I do gravitate towards books where they're like the stakes are, are higher and there's mm -hmm. just more, um, yeah, more ramped up tension and things like that. So this was like a new experience and I'm just like, yeah, I, I do think I like it. I think I like that. It's, cozy and uh, it's not stressful and <laughs> um so and also just yeah, i gotta know that i guess books like this will take me longer even though they're not that long mm -hmm. why, mm -hmm. because of the nature of them you know um Sometimes you just want to take your time you know yeah. there's you know it's just yeah. it's just a pleasant diversion when you need yeah. it so absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely and then, so then the other book that I uh, started and, you know, plan to finish, but this is going to be a longer, uh, a longer effort is actually this one, which is um, Tarot for Transformation 2. And this mm -hmm. book is on the sword suit. And this is by Drea Bloom. Mm -hmm. And so she has, she had one for majors. I think she recently came out with the Pentacles one and then this one. And I think she's going to, you know, follow suit with the, the, mm -hmm. the remaining two. Um, so I have this one and I have the pentacles one that she had sent, um, to me for the purposes of review mm -hmm. and, and they're just going to take a long time to like actually get through because I mean, it's just, it is, I mean, this is all, you know, one suit. It is a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the whole, the whole idea of a book like this is not only are you reading through it, but you are journaling. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's heavily journal based where you're not only learning more about the suit and the different cards, but you're learning about yourself in the process mm -hmm. um, and, and making those connections. So I, you know, I have a notebook and, you know, I'm, I'm going to do the journaling. I haven't mm -hmm. gotten to it just because I've been too busy reading. Mm -hmm. this is a lot. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be uh, just as we go, mm -hmm. <laughs> as I have the bandwidth for it and, and the time. Cool. So I read I read six books in july one of them was obviously the parable of the sower which i also really enjoyed and found mm -hmm. a very difficult read mm -hmm. i don't I, th I don't know if because it was very american centric mm -hmm. i think it was easier for me to disconnect from the story than it would have been necessarily for you sarah because mm -hmm. to me it's like it's happening in a whole nother place kind of thing um, and they, there's just, you know, there's certain connections in, to places and stuff that I just can't make because I don't have that visual knowledge type stuff. But overall, it was it was a hard read. It was a good read, but it was a hard read. And I, I bought it when I bought it. I bought it as a physical copy. But where I bought it from, you could only buy it as a set. So I have the second one. I have Parable of the Talents, but I just looked at it at the end and went no <laughs> I'm just gonna wait I really want to read it I just don't want to read it right now like yeah. I need a gap between those Understandable. Books. so I'm uh <clears throat> I might try it next month I'd like to get to it before the end of the year but then I have a lot of books I'd like to get to before the end of the year so we'll see how that goes but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and then um 
normally I don't talk about books that I read that I didn't like because normally I don't finish books that I don't like but I did read a book this month that I did end up only giving two stars um, and I finished it and it was called uh, Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey so I read quite a bit of horror this month and this was a horror book and the um, premise of the book when I bought it was this woman is the daughter of a serial killer and her he's been in prison he went to prison many many years ago he you know, like when she was a child and she's now grown up and her mum is dying and she gets called home to the house that he built that they lived in when she was a child that he was killing people in the basement of and when she gets home she starts to see she stops finding all these notes from her serial killer father who also by the way is dead sounded fascinating it was a total lie because that is not what the story was about at all. <laughs> the, the, the notes that she, they, she's not finding notes from her father. She's finding old, like, and this isn't a spoiler. Like they tell you this mm -hmm. the first time she finds it. She, her father kept a journal, which she hid under the house. And she's finding pages of this journal throughout the house. Oh. And there's a, there's a lodger and it's, but it's, got almost nothing to do with her father mm -hmm. there are some flashbacks to her as a child and they were the reason that I kept reading because they were the interesting bits wow. mm -hmm. and then the ending like I it's a horror I'm willing to accept a pretty high level of weird in a horror but it, this I was like I'm sorry what <laughs> we're doing what now N no 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 it was terrible it oh. was terrible <laughs> I was oh, so disappointed and I was really looking forward to it as well so but normally I because it was it was quite well written like her writing was was good and you know we, we would read a bit and I think oh I don't think I can do this and then we'd have a flashback to her childhood and it would be really interesting and I would want to know more about what happened when she was a child mm -hmm. so then we'd have another couple of chapters in the present and I'd be like oh my god I'm so bored <laughs> And then we'd get another, just as I was like, oh, I'm going to put it down. You'd get another chapter. Really? Of <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's what so, happened yeah. with me in the Red Palace. Remember that? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I get, I was like going to give up like so many times. And then there's something that reels you back in. Like, okay, maybe there's yeah something yeah. redeeming here. That'll. Maybe we're going to get going with the interesting yes. stuff. No, no, yeah. no, 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 apparently not. <laughs> and I, you know, like, I, you two know me. I am a, I am really easy of going about dnfing like i've dnf'd a book within five pages before mm. i am very good at going this is not for me no thank you yeah. but there's something about this one just made me keep going and i got to the end and i was like well that's time in my life i'm never getting yes. back <laughs> do not recommend <laughs> no so i don't recommend it no definitely not um but then after that i read don't well i audio read with a, like a cast which was so cool don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones, which is the second in the Indian Lake trilogy. So you can't, I can't talk too much about it because obviously it's a it's the second of a trilogy. But the the main the premise for this trilogy is about um, this town and this girl called Jade. She's half Native American and she is in the first book. She's obsessed with serial killer like slasher not serial killer slasher movies, and she's convinced that her town is going to have a slasher mm. and that this girl that is new to the school is going to be the final girl and this it, the first one was good the second one was miles better oh. like I had such a good time it was probably my favorite read in July it was and it had I say it had a cast and it had a cast of people and I was like I know this person I can't remember any of that Jane Levy is the only one whose name I can remember oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then there were other ones that I Googled and I was like, wait, I know your face. I know mm -hmm. you from somewhere. <laughs> so I had a really good time with that one. And now I'm I'm doing that thing I do where I really want to read the third one, but I also mm -hmm. really don't want to read the third one because then it will be over. Mm -hmm. So so I'm kind of putting that off. Um, and then what else did I read? Oh, I read. <laughs> so I read and I got given an arc by Net Galley for a book called Long Live Evil by Sarah, what's her name? Sarah Reese. Brannan, Sarah Rees yeah, Brannan. Sarah Rees Brannan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, it was so bad, but so good. Like it was, you know, when it's like you read a story and you think this is terrible, like the characters are two dimensional, the plot's a bit weak, 
the you know the story's a bit meh but the vibes are so much fun yeah. I genuinely don't care yeah. I'm just yeah. having a great time mm-hmm. and it's about it's about this girl who is she's 20 she's not a girl she's a she's a young woman she's 20 years old she's dying of cancer her and her sister are obsessed with this fantasy series and this woman appears in the hospital and says um, I need you to go into the book and get this particular plant and bring it back out. And other people have tried and no one's ever managed it. So you need to like, and she's like, you're insane, whatever. And she tries to, she pops up and tries to leave the hospital room to go and find somebody and opens the door and steps into the fantasy world. Oh. But she finds herself in the body of the female villain from the first book. Oh, and so she's like, well, if I'm going to be a villain, I might as well be a villain. And she just goes to town with her villainness, like really plays it up. And it's it was just so much fun. I was like, under normal circumstances, it's the kind of book where I'd be like, oh, really? What are we, mm-hmm. what, what are we doing? But it was pure vibe. The entire mm-hmm. book was just pure vibe. I had a great time. <laughs> awesome. And I Look. think it's either going to be a trilogy or a duology. I'm not really sure, but it definitely ends, which is not my favorite thing either. It ends on like a cliffhanger, which I don't mm. love. Yeah. But, but it was Especially fun. since you've got an, an arc and like, uh, like this book isn't even out yet. So the second book in the trilogy is like forever before it's going to be out. So yeah. Yeah. I think it comes out, this one comes out next week, I think. Mm, okay. So it's, yeah, it's going to be a good year mm-hmm. before there's another one. Mm-hmm. So, but it was, it was fun. It was a lot mm-hmm. of fun um what else I also audio read A Natural History of Dragons which is book one in the Lady Trent series Mm -hmm. it was fine Mm -hmm. it was it was like I really wanted to love this book because so many people love it but it just it was like I don't like memoirs and this is just a like a fictional memoir but I was like well it's got dragons so that's got to be fun right but Mm -hmm. unfortunately it just it just didn't work for me Mm -hmm. so I I didn't hate it I had a good time I'm glad I read it I very much doubt I'll pick up any more in the series because I Mm -hmm. just don't I just don't think it's for me but I think for the right person I totally get why other people love it Mm -hmm. I was just and it's a bit like what you're saying with legends and lattes I think Julie the stakes were so low Mm -hmm. Because even when there was like things that would could potentially be sort of high stakes, uh-huh. you know that this is the like the setup of the book is like she's an older retired woman telling you a story about something that happened when she was eighteen. Yeah. So you know the stakes are not like even if the stakes feel high, they're not really. You know she's going to be fine because right. she's writing a book as an old woman. So, right. and I just need a bit more high stakes. I think. Mm-hmm in my in my books so but it was fine I'm glad I'm glad I I read it I just I'm just not sure I'll carry on with the rest of them and then the last book I read was uh Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison Mm -hmm. which is a werewolf story which was fun so this girl who gets called back her twin sister's pregnant and she goes back to her hometown and she doesn't really want to be there and she goes out to a bar one night and she gets attacked by a wolf and mm-hmm. starts turning into a werewolf. Mm-hmm. And it was like I really I the the main character for me made this book because she was so like, oh, I think I might be a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so she was just so practical about it. She was like, you know, oh, I better go and find somewhere to chain myself up on the yeah. moon. <laughs> So I'm like, I, I kind of love this. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was fun. I will definitely read Rachel Harrison again. Her, that's a kind of horror I really like. It was very like, almost like a romance novel, but it just so happened that one of the main characters was a werewolf. <laughs> it was good. The one thing I really liked about it is like she's turning into a werewolf, and at the same time, her twin sister is pregnant and struggling with the idea of being pregnant. And I liked the like the, the the she uses both of those situations to talk mm-hmm. about um how women are not allowed to show that they're struggling with these things that are basically taking over their body that they have no control over. Mm-hmm. And they're not, you know, how they can't 
there's a lot of stuff about female anger and female rage and how women are not supposed to be angry about the fact that they're having to give up their old life they're not really mm-hmm. allowed to grieve it publicly and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff so mm-hmm. on a like a deeper level it, I, it's a really it's really interesting thematically mm-hmm. but then on the surface it's just a really fun story about a girl that gets turned into a werewolf well our next normal category is tv and movies i am not going to have a ton to say here because in the summer if, especially if I'm like back and forth up at a lake place, which is like how I spent a good chunk of July um, going back and forth to the lake place that my sister and brother-in-law rented. Um, I didn't do a ton of TV watching. I mean, I kept up with the acolyte and house of the dragon, the second season of house of the dragon. So I watched those. They were perfectly enjoyable, you know, as far as a couple of episodes of TV to watch every week. Um, you know, nothing, nothing like mind blowing or anything like that, but entertaining enough. Um, so I did keep up with those. Um, I did go to see one movie in the theater, which was a mistake. Um, so me and my local army friend, I've made, I've made an, a local army friend who we go to do BTS stuff together now. And so we got BTS baited into going to see Despicable Me 4 because there was this whole like promo thing that they did where there were like BTS minions and like all of this like BTS related stuff. One of the villains was going to be like an army. And we were like, oh, surely there will be tons of BTS content in this movie. We should just like go see it. Let's just go see it. So we went to see it and A, it was terrible. B, the sound level in the theater was so loud that I felt like I was going deaf the entire time and there was almost no BTS content in the movie like Uh -uh. there was no music there was like like one logo and one poster on the wall and like that's it those were the only references to BTS in the entire movie so we like walked out just being like why did we do that (laughs) (laughs) that totally sucked so if you're a BTS fan don't bother with this Despicable with Despicable Me Four. There's just no reason to go see that. So, anyway, yeah, that yeah. that sucked. So that and that was like that's the only movie I watched. <laughs> I know. The entire month. So it just it was not like for from a TV and movie standpoint, July was a low point of my year. Um, I'll, uh, like I said, I enjoyed the TV that I watched. Like it was perfectly serviceable entertainment um bad movie and mostly didn't watch anything for the, for the rest of the month so um that was pretty much it for me um okay so actually i don't know that i did all that much like tv movie watching either i mean we did continue on with house of the dragon mm-hmm. and that was you know entertaining enough mm-hmm. um we also picked back up a japanese animated show um called my hero academia which is, um, it's about this, you know, young student, I forget his name. uh, And he, so he lives in a world where, you know, people are born with superpowers called quirks, and he Mm -hmm. is born without one. But, you know, just because of his, um, his just good nature, and, you know, things happen in, in the show where the one like, most famous superhero in the world named All Might, um, bestows on him a gift of a quirk. And then he enters this like, superhero school, you know, superhero academy with, you know, other students who are training to become the next generation of of superheroes. So we are still in season one. There are five gazillion seasons. (laughs) How far we'll make it. It's based on a manga, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. (laughs) Um, uh, yeah, of course it is. So yeah, we're, we're, I mean, we've been actually really enjoying it. Um, And, uh, you know, I heard that there are some seasons that aren't as good as others, but um, it's just yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of episodes. I mean, they're all like the one piece. Episodes. Yeah, it's just like you right, you're right. really taking something on at that point. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, um, because we had looked at the the animated version of that too, and then, then we saw just like it was once again like five trillion seasons, all each like you know a thousand episodes long. We're like, okay, maybe not. Maybe we'll just yeah. do the live action. <laughs> Because this seems really daunting. Yeah, so, that's too much commitment for me. <laughs> for for me as well. So yeah, but you know, we're we're enjoying it enough that we'll continue on for as long as we want. No no strings attached. 
Um, and then the other show that I watched is a Korean drama called The Glory. And this has been out for, I think, a couple of years now. It was very popular internationally and especially in South Korea. Um, the main actress, she's just a very popular South Korean actress, Song Hye-kyo. And it's, I, you know, I've heard so many good things about it, but I didn't get around to watching it right away because it is a very difficult theme of, you know, a bullying so she was bullied um, in high school and, you know, just physically assaulted. Like there's just a lot of physical violence and just a lot of content warnings that come along with the show. So I'm like, kind of have to like, you know, prep yourself and like gear yourself up for a show like that. But it was entertaining because I did end up, in fact, binge watching it because, you know, the the rest of the sto um, story entails like, OK, she's bullied and she takes years, years to plot this revenge against her you know her bullies and um she's just methodical about it and um and it's it's over the top as korean dramas you know usually are but i and i and i enjoyed it so i watched um i did watch the second half of season three of bridgerton which i really enjoyed and then i watched i really wanted to watch axel f but mm as is my way, I decided that in order to do that, I would have to watch the first three films again first. So I watched all four Beverly Hills Cop films <laughs> in July. I had, I had forgotten how awful the third one is. Like the first two are fun. The third one is just ridiculous and makes no sense. And characters do stuff and you're like, why are you doing that? Nobody would do that. <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? And then the new one, was fun I I really enjoyed myself it I had a good time like mm -hmm. there's a whole the the whole storyline of you know the father and the daughter are estranged and he goes along and she doesn't want to spend any time with them I'm like this is so done to death at this right. point and they didn't do anything new with it mm -hmm. but I have to say it felt like watching an 80s film, which uh -huh. in a good way, it was a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. if you like the original Beverly Hills Cop films, mm -hmm. I would recommend watching the new one. It, it was good. I enjoyed myself. Um, did I watch it last? Oh, I watched uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism, which is a film mm -hmm. on uh, Prime. And that is, it's based on a book by G Grady Hendrix. So mm -hmm. I love G Grady Hendrix and I've read the book. The book was much 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 better than the film mm. but the film again it was it was fun horror like it was black comedy horror about two teenage girls who are the best of friends and then one of them ends up getting possessed and about and her friend is the one that ends up saving her and it's just you know the story of what that does to their friendship and stuff the book takes a lot longer to develop their friendship and is like a real study of female teenage relationships and how complicated and messy they are the book the film doesn't is such is so rushed that it loses all of that so it's just a fun horror story instead mm -hmm. but still mm -hmm. worth a go um and I also watched a k-drama in July so I watched one called Through the Darkness which is about Korea's first criminal profiling unit and their first criminal profiler in two because they didn't use criminal profiling until 2000 and this guy so it's the guy that it's based on wrote a book and this series is based on his book so all the killers that they they arrest and stuff are all real crimes that happened in Seoul um and serial killers it's very it's like criminal minds if criminal minds wasn't so dramatic oh. um, it's, okay. it's very it's very realistic it's quite you know it's very slow and there's a lot of visiting crime scenes and investigations and it's not like you know like criminal minds sometimes they pull a profile out their ass and you're like okay whatever because <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fun but this is very deliberate and you know it's it built and it's very about how the police don't really want them involved because they don't really buy into this profiling stuff and the mm -hmm. public are like, why are the, why are we interviewing criminals? Why are the police getting criminals to do their job for them? And, but it's very, very good. Well, that brings us to our final topic, which is just wild card. Like what else did we do over the course of the month? Um, I've already talked a little bit about 
what I did over the course of the month. I spent a lot of time up at a lake cabin that my sister and brother-in-law kindly rented for an entire month and allowed us to come up and hang out as much as we wanted. It was beautiful. It was a really nice little cabin, very comfortable. Um, the kids had a great time. My niece and nephew did a ton of fishing. We ate lots of fish that we caught out of the lake. Um, it was just, you know, did a lot of grilling and just like hanging out. It was a lot of sitting in a lawn chair, reading, you know, with a nice breeze, looking at the water. Like it was just a lovely, lovely time. I mean, that was pretty much it. It was, a, it was a very Minnesota lakeside month. So as I mentioned earlier, Matt and I did have a beach trip uh, at the beginning of July. We went to the Outer Banks in North Carolina. And so, um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, we did release My Sister's Ashes, but also we, uh, that's where Matt and I got married um, in Manio. And so it was kind of like feeding a few birds with, you know, um, one scone, which was, mm -hmm. you know, to visit the place where we got married and, and have like also just a nice getaway, which we, this wasn't the smartest idea to plan it during the U.S.'s Independence Day week, um, because mm -hmm. then everybody was there. Yeah. Uh, and we thought that by going, like, during, like, an off time in the week, we thought that that would make things better, and we were wrong. So it yeah. was insanely crowded. The beaches were packed. Um, it was hard to get into restaurants. It was just, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was. The wrong week to choose but you know um but beautiful weather uh it, it did get very hot towards the end of the trip but you know the first couple of days we were there it was it was perfect weather you know nice and sunny and um being out on the the pamlico sound was was beautiful we wanted to get in the water but there were so many jellyfish that we decided mm. not to uh not mm. to <laughs> so well yeah i i think that we would not do that again on like a holiday week. Um, and, you know, we might, I don't know, the, the Outer Banks is very nice, but um, I, I think that we will, it's our second time being, the, no, third, it's our third time now being in North Carolina. So we will probably, we probably won't be back for a while um, and dedicate our time to like newer places to, to try and newer beaches. And um, yeah, it was just too so I uh, also went away the first week of July, the beginning of July. I went on holiday with my mum to Portugal. We went to Albufeira in the Algarve, which was lovely. Then, uh, like, I'm one of four, so getting to spend any one-on-one -on -one quality time with my mum is really hard because because I have three siblings and you know, my dad is still around. So, so it was just really nice to be able to go away with just my mom, spend the whole week together and, you know, go out for dinner and go on little bus tour rides and hang around the pool and all the stuff that you do on holiday. The I've never walked so much in my entire life, though. Like our hotel was on a hill and it wasn't on like a like a little hill. No, 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 no. It was on a hill. No. <laughs> and you had to like every everywhere you just went, like going into the old town was great because it was all going downhill. Mm -hmm. Back, everything was going back uphill again. So, but no, there was one, I don't think there was one day where towards the end where I was like, I'm not walking, I'm getting an Uber. <laughs> and so we did book an Uber. And when we got in the Uber, my mum said, if it was this easy, why weren't we doing this all the time? <laughs> I was like, um, because I forgot it was possible. <laughs> Until right now. <laughs> so, so that was fun. So, but yeah, we had a, the weather was lovely. The place was beautiful. Like we just had a really, really good time. All right. Well, that covers all of our topics. So that was our catch up for the month of July. Um, as always, we will be getting together, of course, again to do this uh, sometime in September to talk about what we've been doing so far in August. But before that, um, we will be having our next uh, Three Girls, One Deck episode on Saturday, August 24th. Um, that will be on my channel. So hope you'll join us for that. But um, in the meantime, thanks so much, everybody, and have a great one. Bye-bye.